waiting for Mary, isn't it? She's running a little bit late, and we do not have time, only 12 minutes. So what we can do, just while we wait for Mary, if you do not mind, I, I basically here yeah, to help her with just a little bit in the beginning. You do not know me. They did not have a story for me on that board, so I must tell you just very quick. Okay, my name is Cornelia Henriette Margrethe Smith. <laughs> do you know me? No? Okay, basically, I'm not from here. You cannot believe it. I'm not from here. I'm actually from Benoni. <laughs> do you know that? You see, there are always a couple of people there, my Benoni people. Hello? So basically, yes, I was a teacher in Benoni. That was that boy in my class, a naughty boy. And here you are. So what I can help with, while shame, we just wait for Mary, is basically you all here to learn something. Is that right? You do not know why you're here. In any case, you find you here. So I can help you just understand one little basic understanding of very important situation for all the peoples. Everyone, am I right when I say this, peoples? Now remember, all the people just looking for what? Hmm? Oh, shame. Okay, no, not that. Um, <laughs> sort of like love that looked like a fried egg or not, that a flower, but in any case, we put it in our heart because then that people can understand. Will that mean happiness? Everyone look for happiness, isn't it? Hey? Yeah, you are looking for happiness. Okay. So there they are. And basically, sometimes can feel like happiness are far, far away because why? You are here. And you cannot, <laughs> you do not even know how, how to get there or even where you are exactly because why you are a little bit stuck in vestidiation. <laughs> vestidiation here yeah, with the petrol prices and basically Zuma also in there and <laughs> the weed eater are not working and plus you have weeds and also you have a little bottom but are getting bigger and bigger like that. <laughs> I do not know what your situation, but it can get you stuck in this mess here. Yeah? And it can look like other people has got their ducks and straps like that. You have no ducks and you probably have squirrels with rabies. <laughs> and basically, they are at a rave. So no, you do not know where your ducks is. So now, what you can do, if everyone will look for happiness, there are always a little bit of options. You understand? So let me help you with that. Here you are in happiness over there. So, how you can get from there, do not know, cannot even see. Basically, do you know what's tin foil? The man's do not know. Maybe sometimes you make a brow with that stuff. In a long, in the middle of the tin foil, what you can find? Yeah, just let you know. Okay, so you can take that one. Don't take a small one, take a long one. See if you can maybe get that perspective out of there and see if you can find some light from here. Try that tube to see if that can help you. That are option A. Option B. <laughs> we get by that, that kind of long one in Bononia. I do not know if you can get it, yeah? In any case, so then with option B, mosquito, maybe try trampoline. You know what's a trampoline? That little thing that can make you <laughs> jump like this. You jump on that thing, try, see if you can get out of it like this. Must push hard, yeah, to try, but it can get a little bit stuck in this woolly situation, yeah. But it must just give it a try. Maybe it can get you up like this if you jump hard, hard, and then you can see perspective. So that's option B. <laughs> but basically, listen here, people, for the hubs, people, there are actually only one option for this situation to find a happiness, and that's option C. Must I, must I explain it to you? Okay, I take this like this, take like that situation. <laughs> Option C, that all? Christ. You understand? You take that situation, you put it like this at the foot of the cross. You take a deep breath. Breathe with me, people. It's quite hot in here. Breathe. <laughs> and you rest in the truth. What are the truth? The joy of the Lord are you? Strength. Okay, thanks. Let us say goodbye to Cornelia. She is a little bit hot now. It's a great message, dodgy uh, individual. Thanks for putting up with her. And, um, and thanks for your great sense of humor. Did you know that God has a sense of humor? Gosh, I didn't know that as a child, you know. On the odd occasion that I did go through to church, it seemed quite serious. You know, it seemed actually a bit sad. <laughs> if the faces were anything to go by. 
was very solemn. And then sometimes when the guy at the front stopped talking, I thought it would be appropriate to, no, my father said, no, no, we don't do that in church. And we'd go back to being somber, you know. So there was that. And then there was the other extreme of the happy clappies, the happy clappy cousins who seemed really, they had the fish, the fish stick on the back of their car, <laughs> you know. They danced a lot, strangely, in church, and um, they seemed to sweat smiling, and sometimes they had a tambourine. So, <laughs> look, I realized that none of that nonsense was going to have anything to do with me. Absolutely not. That church and God stuff, nothing to do with me. After all, I was on a far um, higher quest, a, a, a seeking of truth, a new age journey, which was really far more um, enlightened, you know? And I actually felt sorry for those stuck in the restrictive, limited, um, dogmatic ways of, of religious Christianity. And um, I really did. I thought this was, this was my path, this was the highway. And what's more, I dragged a lot of my friends onto this road, and even strangers. So if someone had told me that I was going to stand here, saved, baptized, keen on a tambourine, I must tell you, <laughs> I would have scoffed, <laughs> but here I am, and God's got the last laugh, hasn't he? A great one. And sometimes I can almost hear him saying, ha ha, I gotcha. <laughs> and he did. So now what, though? Now I'm this reborn Christian. I could hardly believe I was saying that word. In fact, that relationship was very private for a while, almost six months, and I was asking the question, so... So Lord, what do I do now? As a comedic performer that gets, I'm seeing quite nervous of that word comedian, I hate it. So a comedic performer um, that gets invited into corporate environments, into um, schools, normal theaters, very diverse spaces. But I wondered now, with this newfound faith, was there gonna be, was there gonna be synergy with, with what I did and, and, and what I believed? And I, and I was wondering about also the content. You know, a lot of my comedic content was referencing my very unholy life. So these were the thoughts and prayers that were going up. And God's so faithful how he answers those prayers, isn't he? Because literally six months into my relationship with him, which, as I say, was very private initially, I was invited to perform at my school reunion, okay? And um, a Christian girl who I'd never spoken to for obvious reasons um, <laughs> came up to me afterwards and said, you know, we'd love you to come um, and speak to our, our ladies in a church in Dubai, and my husband and I lead this church. Well, I, she, did, she said, I don't know where you are with God, but I feel led to invite you to that. So that was a reassurance for me, I guess, that God saw me, he saw what I did, and he wanted to shine in it. He wanted to use it. So, so that was, that was a, quick, a quick indication that he was on board with what I did. But yes, there was an editing process. And uh, where at first I was preoccupied with what others thought and what my hosts would want me to say, it became the dialogue of knowing his peace about what to, what to use and what not to use. So that was an interesting process. Look, some shows received an entire overhaul. Um, that show Goddess, which I cringe when I hear the word, because I developed that piece at the peak of my new age um, journey, if, if there is such a thing. Um, and. And here I was wondering, what do I do with this? And God seemed to say, I want to use it. He gave me a, a brand new title called Full Bloom. He showed me the roles of women in, through his eyes and how he was central to that and how that brought abundance and full life, you know. So it was quite remarkable that now I had a completely different show, which I was quite ready to, to unload. But what's key about that show is that it now ends with my testimony. And this year... I performed it for 1,500 women and ended the testimony with an invitation to receive Jesus as their savior. So how's that for God using all things for good? How's that for a sense of humor, actually? Hey? The very show once used to promote the enemy, the very show I was most hesitant to hold on to, is the show he's using to win souls home. So it's remarkable. You know, that's old content. There's new content all the time. People say, so, so what part does God play in that creative process? You tell me how you leave the creator out of the creative process. <laughs> you know, as he walks with me, it's like I can feel him pointing out a situation. Pay attention to that or look how funny that is and we'll have a laugh, you know. 
And then I feel like, so what do I do with that, Lord? That's the question. What do I do with that? What's the takeout? What's the message? And then I wait for a weight and a wisdom that I know is not mine. It's his. You know, we can't deny the wit, the energy, and the humor of Jesus. I know that many times, you know, it's, we, people are, are pointing out him as a storyteller. But you see his incredible use of language and how he's got a great appreciation for the absurd, right? He's amused at how someone with a speck in, he's, uh, someone who can be con, um, concerned about someone with a speck in their eye, unaware of the log that's sort of dragging them down. Or how a big, fat, hairy camel needs to go through a very, very small needle. You know? That's great imagery. And I can't imagine it delivered with anything less than a... Hey? <laughs> a wry smile or a twinkle and a wink. Maybe even a good chuckle. Who knows? But I believe, you know, a Quaker philosopher said that if Christ laughed a great deal, as evidence suggests he did... Um, and if he is exactly who he claims he is, then surely there is a, no way we can avoid the logical conclusion that there is laughter and gaiety in the heart of God. And I'm encouraged that that is exactly the truth. If my invitations to speak into secular and church environments this year are anything to go by, he wants his children laughing. And we're all his children, whether they know it or not, they're coming, you know? He wants us laughing. It's amazing to see a, a, a sea of faces laughing and then leaving a building lighter, freer. How can that not be the work of God? And to, to see a church um, environment where perhaps new believers or, or skeptics who are just looking into the claims of Christ accept an invitation to a funny show because they feel more comfortable than perhaps what a preach might, might, might demand. You know, to see them laughing, leaving a, a church environment, going, is that church? Because I'm in. <laughs> you know, as the man-made barriers dissolve, the truth of God can rush in. And I say, bring it on, Jesus. Hey? Bring it on. And uh, I want to be a part of that because, yes, the, the, the Lord is my portion. And as Cornelia said, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Does anyone have a tambourine? <laughs> Thank you.